So, despite the pandemic, we like to deliver the good news in a very intense and the best news is that despite the disease of ovarian cancer and all the limitation in symptoms, screening and treatments, we are able to introduce new therapies. And I'm really proud that within this European community, we are able to improve the outcome of women with ovarian fallopian and peritoneal carcinoma because we are working so close together within the clinical trial groups from Germany to France, from France to Spain, from Spain to Turkey, so all over Europe and even in collaboration with the American colleagues. So ovarian cancer is not anymore one disease and that's based on the knowledge in tumor biology and even in the awareness that ovarian cancer is not anymore one disease, it's much more divided in many, many different phenotypes. And even the treatment modalities are in evolution. Surgery yesterday is something different to surgery today. And maybe even after tomorrow, it's a completely different approach. And that's the same with chemotherapy, with the supportive treatments, and with the so-called targeted or tailored treatments. And that's based on the evidence that we discriminate between low-grade and high-grade ovarian cancer. That based on the evidence that some cancers are associated with germline mutations, BRCA, the so-called breast and ovarian cancer syndrome, or other genetic disorder like so Lynch syndrome. And we have even more and more insights of new predictive and prognostic markers. And that's the challenge to bring all the knowledges in a holistic way to the patients. And that is the melody of my presentation today. So we have the three column model for advanced disease, what means stage three and four, where we have a very high risk for relapse, including surgery as one of the most important prognostic factors, followed by chemotherapy and followed by maintenance approach, stopping the chemo and preserving the tumor control. And the very important message is ovarian cancer is curable. And this is a very, very hot topic. And I like to use this to motivate you and the relatives. The first maintenance treatment what was approved was antiangiogenesis inhibition to block the proteins what induce new vessels to have much more supply for the cancer cells. And this drug was given 15 months in a row after giving the chemotherapy and during the chemotherapy. And based on the clinical trials, and thank you for your participation into the clinical trials, we have now two another maintenance therapies. I want to bring it into the discussion. So the treatment modalities are more and more available and broader and so we like to change a life-treating disease in a chronic disease, such as diabetes or hypotenure. And 
the requirement to read this is to learn much more on the tumor biology and to learn from you. And thank you again for your personal engagement in two clinical trials. I want to highlight two trials in first-line treatment and primary diagnosis and one study in relapse. And we started in the target of therapy with PARP inhibition, an approach to run into the repair mechanism because cancer cells like to overcome the negative destroying effects from the chemotherapy by repairing the system. And with specific drugs, so-called PARP inhibitors, you can block this repair system to maintain the effect of the cancer treatment and to maintain the tumor control. And this was the first trial, the so-called SOLO1 trial. And what I like to highlight from the European uh, Congress is that this curve, and I don't like to show, present curves in, uh, in such seminars, but you see there's a broad differences in survival. And there's a very, very sustainable effect after two years, after three years, after five years. And I have patients now after six, seven years without any relapses in a high-risk population. And after this introduction of the maintenance approach in BRCA positive women, we translated a trial, used the first approach with the antiogenesis combined with the PARP inhibition. And that was a very positive trial and the result was the current approval for patients with BRCI positivity or HRD positivity in their tumor in advanced diseases. And not all countries in Europe have the current approval, but we are proud that we in Germany we have, been, we have now the access for our patients. The second trial was the so-called PRIMA design using a PARP inhibition after chemotherapy without the antigenesis addition and without selection based on any biomarker. And this graph shows you there was an effect in all subgroups what is consistent for the treatment with target therapies. And this is the consequence that the EMEA, the European Agency, approved even this drug. So we have now three maintenance approaches and that was the reason that we, um, we updated the German guidelines and even many other European guidelines for ovarian cancer. So what I like to highlight here is that despite the wonderful improvement and the introduction of target therapy, surgery is crucial. And this is a subgroup analysis looking on patients depending on the surgical outcome, complete resected or not. And you will see that the effect is even in the complete resected population much higher. So surgery is really, really crucial. And this is independent from chemotherapy and subsequent therapy. So you cannot substitute a treatment with the other treatment. So at the end of the day, it's a story to combine all best modalities in a row. This makes a difference. This is a philosophy why we are fighting with our friends, Engage and all the other societies to bring better treatments to the patients. And this trial was just presented a few days ago 
in US, in America, on the American Congress of Gynecology, and showing the long-term safety in, in the trial where you give a PARP inhibitor in relapse setting after chemotherapy and responding on a platinum-based scheme. And you see that the non-hematological but even the hematological toxicity are stable and not cumulative, so it's not increasing. And that's the basis that you can take it for many, many years. And I'm so proud that we have patients, even one patient from our movie Second Voice now in the seven year now, in the seven year, in a third line, after the second relapse, after one year now, seven years without any new cancer, without any requirement for chemotherapy, without demand for surgery. So that's, I think, outstanding. And I'm, I'm really thankful to you that you supported these trials. Long-term survivor is one topic of our foundation, what is in the central of our activities. And I think we are maybe one of the first to try to visualize this and in collaboration with charity but even with the other institutions and societies we even increase the awareness in, in the clinical day but even in science and I'm proud that we want to continue even this initiative to a European to a global activity. So that's even one additional, very relevant information for you. What we did in Germany, we looked on predictive marker for quality and centers. And what we have observed is that a patient who entering a center who are participating in a clinical trial, independent from the result of the individual trial, have a better outcome than a patient who run in a center without contact to clinical trials. So that's the reason why we motivate you, please, to participate in trial and even to enter centers, institutions who are able to do trial because this is an indicator even for attitude, for education, for training, for networking. And this is relevant for your personal story. So at the end of the day, I like to address a little bit to the pandemic. It's pity that we don't touch you physically. But I was really shocked if I have seen the study from Engage that every fourth woman had much more fear against COVID-19 to, in comparison to the progression of the disease. So information, education is relevant. And that's the reason we like to motivate you to vaccinate and even to um, take your best treatment, see your doctors if you have symptoms, take your maintenance approach your, and do the surgery in the best way we have to do. And thanks to you all, even from the European community, that they used our COVID-19 brochure from the German Avarian Cancer Foundation and translated it now in several other languages. And this is a symbol for family. Yes, we are in the same family. And thank you for your contribution. And thank you all of supporting our initiatives.